Hi everyone. I'm Kathleen from Zen Art. Maybe you've um, seen me if you've um, checked out some of our articles. Um, I usually write under toolkits. Um, so if you haven't, you might want to check it out later. Okay. So today we'll be um, painting in watercolor using um, our Zen Art palettes, watercolor palettes. These are our new palettes. So I'll be showing them to you so you can check them out as well. Um, and then we'll be painting tropical fruits. Okay, so um, like bananas, um, the papaya, um, tangerines, mangoes, and the pineapple. Okay, let's see um, how much we can cover. Okay, so we're not, we're not in a hurry to finish everything. Okay, I'd rather we enjoy painting. Okay, so let's see. Um, before we start, um, I listed down the materials in the events, under the event, so you can see it there. Let me know if you need time to prepare them or anything if you have any questions before I start okay so meanwhile um, I'm gonna show you um, the materials that we'll be using so you'll have some um, time to prepare if you need to okay so I'll be flipping the camera down, okay, so don't be surprised if it's um, uh, flipped, I will still flip it back, okay? Alright, so I'll flip it down so you'll see my desk. Okay, there you go. Alright, so um, now it's flipped right. Okay, so now um, it's still zoomed out. Later on, I'll zoom in so you can see the details um, much better. Okay, so first, of course, since we're doing watercolor, the most important will be our watercolor palettes. So you can either have um, the ones that come in um, pans like this, okay, or if you prefer using the cubes, that's fine too. Okay, so now um, this is a really cute one that I actually really like from our um, from Zen Art. Um, Okay, it's the espresso palette, so it has um, 12 colors. Um, these are like your um, limited palette of colors that you'll need for anything really. Okay, so um, here is the swatch of the colors. So you'll see um, a lovely selection of colors, and it's very small, you can easily bring it. Um, in your bag, in your pocket, actually. It, it can fit in your pocket. Okay, so if you like um, doing a lot of sketching or plein air painting, then this is really perfect. All right, so I'll show you the others. So for today, I'll be using the Allegro because um, the tropical fruits, they're in yellows and um, oranges. So um, the Allegro palette has a lot of those, as you can see. Okay, so it has a lot of the warm colors, which are perfect for painting uh, vibrant red and yellow fruits. And of course, if you also like painting flowers, they're also great. And here is the swatch of colors, you can see. Lovely. Right, here it is. So it already comes with a brush and um, a water brush. So, and also... Uh, mixing plate here, mixing section, and sponge. So it's everything you need already in one um, palette. Okay, so we'll be using this. I'll set it here for now. And then um, we also have the Sereno. Okay, actually, I use this the most. 
as you can see, um, it has more of the, the blues and greens and browns. So if you like to do more of the landscape painting, foliage, things like that, then this is really great. Okay, so for now, um, I'll use this one. Okay, so you need your watercolor. Okay, that's one down. Um, next, you need, of course, your brushes. So um, I have here mine. I've prepared it already. I put mine in a jar, so they're all accessible. So this is uh, these are Zen Art brushes. Okay, so um, this is from the Turner collection. So we you have a lot to choose from, really, for this um, exercise for this um, fruit watercolor painting tutorial. We'll, I'll be using this um, round brush. I don't even remember the size anymore because I use it often. Okay, so it's really great. It's really um, fat here, so it holds a lot of um, water and pigment, and it has a fine tip. Okay, and I also like to use um, the smaller version of it for the finer details. Okay, so this is, I think, number five or six. So I'll start with this, these two, and then um, if I need the really smaller ones later for tinier details, then they're just here, ready. And this um, set also comes with a palette knife. Okay. So um, next, of course, you need your paper. Okay, so here um, I've already, I used this um, Fabriano um, watercolor paper. And um, it's not the thickest, it's not very thin, it's, uh, it's what I usually use when I just do some exercises. And then I've already pre-stretched it with uh, just masking tape so that um, it won't easily buckle, at least it, it will hold it in place. Okay, um, and then um, you also need your water, okay? So I have two, so you all, you, you have water that um, I usually use for um, like mixing and then one that I use for rinsing so that uh, I keep them cleaner for a long time so I don't have to keep um, replacing them. Okay, and then I need also a mixing plate. Okay, so um, some palettes already come with mixing plate so you can use that or you can use an actual ceramic plate actually. Um, so. In this instance, I will use this one. Okay, so it's great. So if you need to mix your colors, you know, um, it's very um, essential. Right, and then after that, of course, you need your uh, paper towel. I usually have like a, a roll um, as part of my materials there, stash. And then I just uh, get about two and fold, and then I have it here nearby so it's um, easy because you'll need this for lifting um, watercolor, lifting, uh, creating lift-off effects or to absorb excess water from your brush. Okay so it has it's very useful it has many uses. Right and then um, I also like to have swatches I mean scrap paper okay so this is like um, uh, my extra paper, so I don't throw them out. I I use them to try out my mixtures. So if you're not sure when, while you're mixing them on your mixing plate how they would really look like, um, you can test them out first to see if it's is it dark enough or is it too light or maybe it's too dark. Okay, so you can or is it the right color first and foremost? So you can test it out. I really like to do this so that I'm sure that I'll end up with a color that I like. Okay, especially if I'm, uh, for example, for this, I, I was mixing, I was painting trees, so I was like needing a lot of green. Right, so I can still, there's still space, so I can still use this. So I'm going to keep on using it, and then there's also the other side. So this is handy. If you have extra paper, it doesn't have to be watercolor paper, it can be any scratch paper then um, have them there near you. You can use it for this. All right. And then, um, of course, before you paint, um, you need your, your pencil and your eraser. 
Okay, I like to use the kneaded eraser because um, it's not going to ruin the paper. Okay, with a hard eraser, um, there's a chance of, um, you know, um, degrading the paper. And you don't want that because you want your paper to be nice for the watercolor. Okay, so, but mainly when you sketch, it's um, a good idea to sketch lightly. All right, um, unless that's the effect that you're looking for, for the pencil drawings to show through then uh, try to draw lightly so that um, when you want to erase it's also easier so I always remind my students that draw lightly unless you really want your lines to be dark then um, draw lightly okay so um, there you have it those are the materials you need I hope I didn't forget anything I don't think so okay so um, also another tip <laughs> When I'm painting um, big, um, big areas, uh, I like to have this um, syringe, okay? Because um, before I would just like dip my my dip my brush in the water and put it here, and you know I keep it. It takes time. As if you need a lot, then it's gonna take long. And if you're just gonna pour from your jar, it might be messy. So I use a syringe to get water and then um, drop it here. Um, very useful and it, this is pretty cheap and you can use it for forever all right so are we ready to start okay hi Beatrice <laughs> Beatrice okay so first we shall sketch okay I'll zoom in all right so you won't um, you won't see the whole my whole desk okay so if you checked the reference photos okay we'll start with the bananas okay because i love bananas and here in the philippines um it's so it's like a staple fruit we have it year round and there are so many kinds here um, but we'll start with this one pretty easy right and uh, yummy okay so i like to have my reference photo here okay so this is very handy all right. Also, I used my old palette for stretching my paper. So we can start by sketching, but first I'll zoom in so you can see much closer and better. All right. Okay, that's looking great. All right, and then prepare everything so that you don't have to keep standing you know, you don't have to be um, worrying about so many things or stopping midway because watercolor is really hard. Once you've made a mistake, it's much harder to fix than oil or acrylic. So it's good to be prepared. Okay, so let's let's divide the paper, whatever paper you have, so we don't have to make big drawings. So just an exercise. All right, so I'm gonna divide my paper. Okay, so I'm just gonna make, doesn't have to be exact. I'm just actually, you know, eyeballing it. So I'm just gonna divide it into four parts. Okay, we'll start with the easier fruits. And then we'll do the pineapple last, if, you, if you're still up for it. But let's start with the easier fruits. The pineapple, it's not really hard hard, but it's just, it has more you have to do more details so it's just it's gonna take longer okay but uh, you know with everything if you do it step by step if you break it down um, it becomes easier so let's do that okay so let's divide the paper okay I hope you can see it all right so I'll start um, here on top all right so I'll start with a banana all right if you have your reference photo then um look, look at it if you want to use another kind then you're free to do that as well if you have your own banana photo all right so um i'm gonna draw a bit darker than i would be so that um, you can see it okay i'll start with the top and when you draw this it doesn't have to be very detailed or super perfect okay as long as you see that it looks like a banana 
that's fine okay so don't stress too much over it remember to enjoy right that's the most important part of the process to enjoy what you're doing so that you know you'll keep doing it all right okay so have your needed eraser handy So try to pay attention to the shape of the banana. And it's uh, overlapping parts. Okay. Sometimes I already like to delineate the parts where there will be shadow. You don't have to do that. That's just uh, my way. All right. Okay, so um, take your time sketching. Okay. Um, don't be in a hurry, just um, enjoy it. And try to observe the little curves. Sometimes it's just when you feel like, what's wrong with my sketch? It's just a little curve adjusted here and there makes a huge difference. Okay, so I see that I've drawn it too long, so I'm gonna adjust. Okay. And then draw the lower part. Okay, I hope you see that. Okay, so I have one down. So I chose this photo so it doesn't have too many bananas, but it looks better if there's like a few of them rather than one. Okay. And now I'm going to do the last one at the back. Okay. So you can make this smaller, okay? You don't have to make it as big as I'm doing. If you want to make a smaller one, that's fine. I just like this so that I can, there's more space to play around with the colors later. So it's actually already crossing towards the other section, but that's fine. Okay, those are just um, lines to guide you. Okay, so when I'm looking at my, my reference photo, I, I like to check like the distance between, you can compare so that um, you can see if, oh, are you drawing it too long and such. Okay, so just um, keep checking. Okay, so it's about here. And I'll do that. Okay, and then, oh, before I forget, there's this part here where you still see the, the one here at the back. Okay, and this one can be a bit bigger. All right, so there's my banana sketch. Okay. Okay, I think I'm happy with it. Yeah, okay, doesn't have to be perfect. All right, but I like it to be big and, you know, um, yummy looking, not, um, not anemic and thin. All right, so I think I'm good with it. Sometimes, uh, oh there, this section is a bit too, a bit too thick, so I'm gonna thin it down a bit. Okay. So I do this, I like to make adjustments while I still can. And also, um, it's good to um, keep looking from a, um, a distance, right? Uh, whenever you're working on something and you're working on it closely, um, every now and then take a break and look at it from uh, a few feet apart. So uh, that fresh distance um, shows you things that you wouldn't normally see when you're looking at it up close all right so that's my sketch okay so i think you see it right all right so just let me know if uh, you don't hear me or you don't see something clearly so i can adjust accordingly okay so meanwhile okay now it's time to start painting all right so with watercolor 
the thing to remember is you always start with the lighter colors right so you have um, to look at your um, photo what are you painting and uh, see what will be the lightest color for you to use all right so here it would be um, a lighter a paler yellow all right so with this Allegro palette it's perfect it has many uh, shades of yellow and if you check the reference photo the banana also has some green so I'll probably be using also this green here later okay or you can use your own green if you want I actually recommend um, you experiment mixing your own colors so you also learn how to use from just a few colors right so like I said I have this syringe all right I'm gonna put some here all right I'll see if I need more Okay. So when you when you're mixing a color, it's not pre, it's not pre-mixed already in your palette. It's and you need to paint a big area of it. Make sure to mix uh, more than you need because you don't want to run out midway and then have to mix it again and then you know it won't end up the same. All right. So, um I'll start with this um paler yellow. It's a lemon yellow. Okay, so it's like the first the first shade of yellow. So I'm gonna be like layering my yellows. All right. Okay, so I'll see now. Do I like how it looks like? Is it too dark? Is it too light? Okay, so it's uh, a nice light shade. Great for the first layer. So I'm gonna use that now on my banana. Right, I'm gonna paint it all over. Right, So at first, it looks like it's a bit ne neonish. It's very bright. But remember, it's just your first layer. So the, the nice thing about watercolors is the layering. You can really create beautiful um, effects when you layer and you see the colors mixing and showing through because of the transparency of watercolor. So no other medium is has this kind of beautiful transparency where you actually want to see your brush strokes because they give your work um, it, the identity, you know, its individual identity. All right. So next, um, you can wait for it to dry if you're layering. Okay. But um, since uh, this is one straight class. Let's do it without waiting it waiting for it to dry. But you can also test that, okay, separately how it looks like. If you're in a hurry, you can also use um, a blow dryer, which I do. Okay, I have a blow dryer ready always. All right. So um, after this uh, lighter, brighter yellow, I'm gonna go and use the um, deeper yellow. All right. So I'll show you here. First, I use this, and now I'm gonna use the next one. Okay, so I'm just gonna um, put it here, right beside here. I don't need blot, so I'm gonna just directly put some water. Okay, so this one I'm gonna be mixing a bit um, more pigmented. Okay, I'm gonna make it more pigmented because this is like the base, the base color of my banana. So if if you have your reference photo, you can definitely make. Um, color changes okay because it's up to you it's your artwork all right so if we look at the reference photo um, you'll see some parts have the deeper yellow all right especially the parts where they're more shadowed and then there are also highlights okay so I'm also gonna uh, pay attention to the highlights and don't cover that too much okay all right so let's continue Okay, as you can see, it's a 
warmer yellow. Earlier we used um, a brighter yellow, a more a yellow that's heading towards the blue side. Okay, a cooler yellow. So now we're layering it with a warmer yellow. Okay, so if you wanna uh, blend the edges, you just dip your water, your brush in the water, remove some of the pigment, and then brush over the edge. And that's gonna feather the edge, and also that's gonna make the color lighter. So you're you're blending it like this. Okay, so that's what you do when you want the edges to be soft. Okay, so just um, with a damp brush that's, um, you know, uh, you wash the pigment off. You don't have to wash a lot, just remove most of it and then you brush the edge and then you can create your soft edges. All right, and now I'm going to continue here at the bottom. So like I said, I like, I'm going to keep this um, part the highlight. It doesn't need to be white because um, the banana's highlight here also doesn't look white. It's a very pale yellow. So that's why um, the first layer would be the highlight color. All right. So now I've covered it. Okay. So if you went over the edge and you're bothered by it, then just uh, use a clean brush, clean wet brush, and just go over, over that, remove it. You can lift up, lift the color off. All right, while it's still wet. Okay, so what, when you're gonna make fixes like that, it's best to do it while it's wet. Some paper um, allow you to um, fix it. Okay, where did this come from? Fix it while it's, um, when it's dry, but there are also paper that uh, don't allow it. So do your fixes while your paint is still wet so that um, you can save yourself some um, regret later on. All right, so now I'm gonna go to the next banana. Uh, next, yeah, <laughs> all right. And then it also has some highlight. So I'm also gonna keep some of that. And I'm also gonna feather the edges to create the smooth edge. Okay, but it's up to you. Okay, because um, those edges also have their own beauty. So whichever you prefer, um, go ahead and do it. All right. Okay, so let's continue that. Okay, and for the banana below, I'm actually gonna go directly to the pan and get a more pigmented um, swatch of color and apply directly so that it's very it's a very dark yellow okay there you go and now um, let's continue to this last one. Oh, and then the a part of this on top Okay, I'm going to mix some more color because I think the one that I mixed earlier got contaminated. Okay, there you go. And here, um, the highlight is below because in this photo, the light is coming from the left. So um, you have to remember where your source of light is coming from because that will dictate your the colors that you mix, the shadows, the highlights. Right, so just um, keep in mind where it is so that um, you will have a consistent shadowing and highlight. Okay, and then I'm gonna feather the edges, but you don't have to, like I mentioned earlier especially if you want to do um, layering. Seeing the different um, layers and their edges on top of each other is also beautiful. Okay, so just a bit, just a 
soften okay so those are two layers already then you can check um, which parts you want to make darker you can go over it again okay so try to do it layer by layer so when you're mixing wet on wet your colors will blend with each other so if it's um, analogous colors those that are right beside each other in the color wheel then that's it's there's not much danger of muddied colors but if you're like mixing colors that are far from each other in the color wheel there's a danger that you that you might be mixing browns and grays instead of beautiful layering so if you want if you're going to do that then um, be careful okay check your color wheel and check um, which colors would look great together okay so the banana is starting to um, look like a banana okay take your time okay do it slowly part by part so that you don't get overwhelmed so it's the same idea when you're painting the human body or the face if you look at it as a whole you're you are you know you'll get overwhelmed you feel like oh my god it's too hard but um once you break it down you realize that oh you know it's very doable you just have to do it um step by step Okay, so I'm just checking which ones I want to darken a little bit with this brighter yellow. Okay, so things will come together later on once you add the greens and the shadows. Okay, so don't uh, get impatient. Um, we're all guilty of that, like, oh my gosh, it's looking, it's not looking too well, you know. But remember, um, we're still not done. Okay, so it's, uh, don't judge your work yet while it's still unfinished. But I'm very guilty of that too. You know, you like second guessing yourself. Okay, but don't worry. There's still time to add more, to fix things. Okay, so that's the, I think I'm glad with this banana. So what I'll do is, because I don't want the green to mix, I want it to be separate, I'm going to use a blow dryer to um, dry the yellows so I can add the green that won't, you know, that won't bloom and mix with the yellow but will sit on top of it. Okay, so when you wash your brush, don't leave it dunked in the water, okay? That's going to ruin your lovely brushes. So wash them and... Um, leave them flat to dry okay so I'll just get my blow dryer okay and then or you can use uh, some use um, heat guns okay it's up to you so I'm gonna use a blow dryer because it's not too wet so there won't be um, the movement of the water that's gonna get ruined so it's just more flat washes so that's fine Thank you, technology. Okay, the things that make our lives easier now. All right, so um, now I'm going to use uh, green. So I'll check now. I think I prefer this um, olive green, but um, I'm also going to make some of this Oriolan green because it's it's bright, and then the green here is a bit bright, but then I don't want it to be too bright. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm going to use that and mix some of the olive green to. Um, subdue it a little all right 
So let's do that. I'm going to mix it um, here because I'm just going to need a little bit. So I'll start with a brighter green here. And you can even use layers if you're up to it. Okay, you can layer the light, the brighter green and then after that um, on top do the um, darker green. You can do that too. Okay, so you can experiment. So I'll start first with a mix and then later on I can um, add the darker green if I need some parts darkened. Okay, so here's my trusty swatch. I'll check if I like it. Okay. So it looks like a bright green, but not too bright. So I'll use that. I'm happy with it. Okay, so here I'm going to start at the top. Okay, this is all green. So I'm going to color this all green. Later I'm going to color that with brown as well. All right. And then go down. So I don't want it to cover the whole yellow, okay? I just want it to start from green and then slowly turn yellow, okay? I still want the yellow to show through, like, you know, naturally, like how it looks like on the bananas. Okay, next. And then go down, okay? So I'm going to use this to make the, the line on the banana. Okay. And then go towards the end tip. All right. So there's a line. Right now, now it's very stark. So I'm going to I'm going to feather the edges a bit, just one side. Okay? I still want to keep the line. So I'm going to soften the other side. Okay, so with watercolor, as long as it's wet, still wet, you can do so many things still. Okay, you can play around with your uh, mixing. Okay, the best way really to learn is to experiment. Okay, so, you know, just keep trying out mixes, styles. Okay, so I think I actually made this too high. So I'm going to lift off what I can. then add a little bit green again later when it's dry okay so now I'm gonna do the next um, green okay try to again blend it up, down just use water okay use water to dilute the pigment down blend it down and next Okay, again, I'm going to blend it down, soften. Okay, continue. Okay, it's okay. And then I'm going to add another one here. There's another, like, soft line. Like, you know, it's when you open a banana and, and it opens from that, like, following these lines that we're doing now. Okay. So remember, don't stress out if you make mistakes, okay? That's a part of learning. When every time you feel like you don't like what you end up with, um... It's not, nothing is, you know, lost because you still learned something. Like you learned to, okay, I don't like this effect for this certain work. Next time, I'll try something different. Okay, it's always a learning experience. Okay. The first time I did watercolor in, in school, I was, I think I 
did it three times before I was happy with it. So that's, you know, that's normal. Okay, but keep all of those. I actually keep all of my, like, hashtag <laughs> failures, but they're not really. They're your learning, learning progress. Okay, so now our banana is um, starting to have um, depth. No, it's not flat anymore. It's looking more three-dimensional. Okay, so we want that, of course. Okay, I'm going to add a bit of green here just to keep up with the green all over the banana, you know, to make it balanced. So sometimes, um, if you look at it, it doesn't seem like it has green, but it actually does have, just very pale. Okay, so um, still put that in because it, it will add to the to the effect. Okay, so um, now that that's done, I can now add a little bit of. I'm not. I'm not going to use just brown okay i think i'm gonna mix it with um this deep yellow so it's not you know it's not like a muddy brown okay and i don't need a lot of it because it's just foreshadowing really okay it's dirty okay so every time when you're painting um try to um, observe if you know your water is already affecting your mixtures because maybe your water might be too dirty already so um, replace them okay you don't want your painting to be ruined because um, you didn't realize that your water was already too dirty so just uh, keep that in mind there are times when i i do that and i'm like why is my water am uh, i painting like it's supposed to be yellow but it's turning green okay things like that so don't forget to replace your water every now and then. All right, so I'm mixing the bright yellow. And um, in the photo, you don't really see like brown, brown. So I'm going to be adding a bit of um, brown, but I'm going to use um, burnt shenna. So it's like a, a warm, nice warm brown. Okay, so I'm going to add that to my bright yellow. Okay. So I'm going to use that for the shadowed parts. There you go. Looks great. It's like a brown orange. Perfect for shadowing um, fruits with a yellow color because it's it's very near yellow. So it's going to look um, natural. All right. So I'll start here. Okay. And keep your um, your paper towel close because um, you'll use it to control the the amount of pigment that goes to your paper. Maybe there's too much, so just wipe it off. Okay. I'm gonna continue it the whole way because there's shadow the whole way. And again, I'm here to soften the edges. Okay, so it looks more natural. And also because we don't really have all the time to do all the layering. Okay, now I'm gonna move to the next banana. So for this one, this is on top of the one at the bottom, so the shadow will be the one on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to do it here. Okay. So sometimes it also helps not to finish everything in one day okay um, a fresh eyes also give you um, a different perspective so for example I, I do 
two to three layers and then I continue on a different day because um, you know the, the break that you took um, so there are many times that it makes a big difference you can also stop yourself from overworking okay so don't stress about the brush strokes and such because you actually want you know brush strokes because they look very organic and lovely okay I'm gonna add some here just on the edges okay sometimes they also use the the broken line okay so you don't have to draw the whole line you just have to um, show that there there's a line and the, the eye connects it so it's like um optical you know illusion okay and then here there's also shadow here okay so I'm gonna add uh, a darker green later here on top and then I'm gonna add a bit of brown here just a bit and then feather it out Okay, and now for the top part with a more brown here, I'm going to do that now. All right, so that's the main banana. So we can go back on it later. Okay, we can get back to that. I also add a little bit of um, a darker brown. Uh, I'm going to use some burnt umber directly from the pan and uh, make this part darker where it's a darker brown. So I'm going to do that already while the paint is still wet so that it bleeds with a lighter brown and it looks more natural. Okay, sometimes I also use this to suggest lines here and there. Like I told you earlier, broken lines. Um, it's great. Here and there, just add a line or two darker, just to suggest a more a sharper edge. Okay, I'm going to use the same brown for the ends of the bananas. Okay, very important. Your banana is not complete without this dark tip. Okay, so just add that quickly. Okay, doesn't have to be too detailed or perfect. And then here as well. Okay, so once it's all dry later, um, I'm going to add uh, just like bit of shadow on the surface just to show you know that um, this is not a floating fruit okay so as you can see I'm adding my broken lines here and there which you know um, it sort of draws the shape but not too obviously just choosing which edges you want to give attention to Okay, here and there. And of course down here because this is where most of the shadow will be. Alright, so now I'm just going to take care of this one at the back because this is the most shadowed. Okay, this is the one that's really behind everything. Okay, so I'm using the burnt um, shenna, and then I'm just gonna soften, blend it. 
Okay, and then I'm going to use the dark brown to sort of create this line. All right, so now there you have it. There's the watercolor banana. All right, so now let's go to that took some time. Okay, so this is how long it takes, but I hope you had fun. Okay, so now let's go to the next one. Um, let's do the tangerine. All right, so I'm going to do it down here so that I don't, you know, touch this part while it's still wet and regret it. All right, so like I said, um, first we sketch. So this is uh, much easier to sketch. It's round. All right, so plot it out in your paper, okay, because um, we also have the small tangerines, I mean the open ones, and then the leaf. Okay, so this is pretty round. I love tangerines. Um, you can easily bring them, easily open them, and they're much, much sweeter than oranges. And they're also very popular here in the Philippines, and they're, you know, pretty cheap. So perfect. All right, so. Now I'm going to do the the open tangerine parts. Okay, so just a quick sketch. Again, like I said, doesn't have to be perfect. Just get the, you know, the shape. And you can add the little details later when you paint. So just taking care of the shape and the placement on your paper. That's it. Okay, and another one here. I'm going to make this more rounded. All right. Okay. Make this a bit bigger seems to be a bit bigger. Okay, there you go. So, um, now the sketch is finished, I guess. I'm just checking for the proportions. Like sometimes you can see it in relation to a certain object, like it ends here, or this part of the orange is, or the tangerine, rather. So always check your work that way. And I'm just going to add this um, part, just so I can keep track of it later on. Okay, and big relief. Alright, so that's finished. Now we can paint. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. Alright, it's uh, basically oranges. So perfect. The palette has them. Okay, so I'm going to uh, first mix uh, because this is, you know, they're too um, light or too bright. So I'm going to mix um, gamboge with um, a little bit of scarlet. Let's see if I like what it looks like. All right, so uh, let's uh, mix that. Let's create our own orange. Okay, I'm going to do it here. Okay, so first... Okay, I'm going to add a bit more. Right, and now I'm gonna add the um, scarlet. Okay, so this is a warmer, warmer red. Okay, and now I'm gonna check if um, 
I like this shade that I've mixed. Maybe it's too dark. Okay. So, uh, looks okay. Right, so I like it. I can use it. It's not too dark, it's not too light, and it's a good shade of orange. Right, so I'm going to mix it. I'm going to use it for this whole um, orange, okay? I'm going to just paint it a flat wash. Okay. Okay, there you go so that's the first layer okay so um, you can go over it you can you know stop just um, don't stress about the first layer because right, like I said earlier you're still gonna do two or three more right and then I'm gonna also color these because they're also orange So if you want to do the more traditional um, way of doing watercolor, um, traditionally, you if there's white on your paper, you leave it white. So you paint around it, right? So your white is your paper. But um, let's do the much easier one where you can add the white. You can paint the white on top later on with um, white. Usually, um, gouache would be great or I, in my case I use acrylic all right so um, that's the first layer now let's go to the next which is um, still orange okay but now it's more of a really darker brighter orange okay so it's still the same mixture but I'm just gonna add um, more pigment okay make it darker Okay, so in the reference photo, um, the light is coming from the top, so the shadow is um, down here. Okay. Okay, so let's continue. Um, I'm going to start um, here. Okay. And then paint upwards. Okay. And then slowly um, blend it up. Okay. So remove some pigment from your brush. Go up. Okay. So just keep removing, just keep adding more water. Okay. Just keep adding water slowly as you go up and that's going to make it lighter, it's going to dilute it. Okay. So with this uh, fruit, I don't like to make it smooth because the texture is perfect for the tangerine or the orange. You know, it's not, it's not smooth fruit, it's very textured. So I actually like to keep that, those um, colors pooling here and there, you know. It's uh, perfect for the fruit. Okay, gonna add water to soften. Remember the light is up here, so it should go lighter as it goes up. Add water to your brush slowly, every now and then. They also remove um, pigment by brushing it on the paper towel. So if 
you think there's too much pigment, just clean your brush and use that to lift off the paint. Okay? I'm just refining the edges, make them crisp. Okay, so right now I like it. And then um, I'm gonna wait for it to dry because um, I'm gonna do the, the texture here on top, the lines. Okay, I think I put too much, so I'm lifting off. Okay, so just do that. You can always still fix it, especially while it's still wet. Okay, it's much harder when it's dry. But you also, you know, you also experiment that. Like, uh, maybe it also gives you a different effect. So you never know. Experiment both ways. All right, so I'm going to add a bit more here and there. I like the texture. Okay, so already, just by allowing the the brush strokes and the texture to remain, you know, untouched, um, it gives you already the texture of the tangerine. Okay, so now, um, here I'm gonna try to paint the orange and leave a white spaces. Okay. Well, not exactly white, but you know, this pale orange. All right, so I'm gonna use uh, a deeper, a darker orange in this, but not as dark as this. As you can see in the reference photo, it's a lighter orange. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna mix a lighter orange, but uh, more pigmented. Okay, so you can also try the using go wash to do the white um, veins of the tangerine okay try them both okay see see what you like all right so i'm gonna use a smaller brush now so i can get the details uh, you know much better so let's see i think i prepared that earlier okay i'm gonna use this the rigor brush okay it's great for those fine um, thin lines okay it's really long so it can also hold more um, water and pigment okay so I'm gonna draw the veins now I mean around the veins rather okay I think it's too light so let's add some more pigment Okay. All right. Forgot to test it out, so now I'm gonna test it out. Okay, that's much better, darker. Okay, so you don't have to follow your photo exactly. Just you know, here and there. What would the veins look like, right? So just the effect. Okay, it doesn't have to be exact. Don't stress over that. Just the just show the, the impression of the veins. I try to um, do different sizes. Okay, and then I'm gonna thin out the paint on the edges. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush. So I'm doing the, you know, the traditional way which is like painting around the parts where you want to keep lighter or white ok 
Okay, so you can do it this way. Or you can just paint the lines over later with um, gouache. Or if you have a white, then you can do layers of it and uh, see if it will be um, pigmented enough or thick enough to create the white effect. So I'm going to continue with the others below and behind. Okay, showing the veins here and there. So the sizes are not diff the same, of course, right? Okay, and then fading out. So I actually want to add white later, just to have the better contrast. Okay, I'm going to finish the other one. So this one is behind, so I don't see the veins as much. So I'm just going to show a bit here and there. So this one is even more, um, just more of an impression of the veins. Okay, and now um, I'm going to go back to this one, okay, go back to the, I'm going to change brushes again to number, the number five, okay, this one, okay, so let's see, uh, I'm going to use a uh, deeper orange now to do, to add more shadows here where they're meeting each other. So with um, some paper, sometimes when it's still wet, um, if you touch it already, it's gonna it's gonna lift off the previous layer. So if you don't want that to happen, um, make sure it's dry, completely dry. Okay, in this case, uh, well, it's sort of happening. Let's try to keep it light okay all right so this will be the darker or more pigmented orange for the shadow okay i'm also going to use it to create um, like stippling for the texture so you can do that okay just um make your brush stand vertical and make small dots Okay, you have to be patient with this if you want to keep the dots circle. Okay. And not like little checks. Okay, so I'm just gonna add so you know it has the, the texture, the beautiful texture of um, tangerines and oranges. Okay, so you can just do the stippling effect and it will give it that. So you can also use this to, to shade actually. The more dots you create, then it means that area is more shadowed. You often use this, um, you're more often you see this technique used in pen and ink, but you can definitely use it with other mediums as well, like watercolor, acrylic or oil. Okay, so already it gives it that tangerine texture, which is really nice. Okay, until here, I'm going to use this, and then you can even vary the shades, like you can change to a lighter shade if you want, 
which I'll try to do, especially for this um, less shadowed part. Okay, I'm gonna see if. Okay. So using a lighter. Okay. So before I fill it in, I'm first gonna do the the lines from this um, stem here, from where the stem came from, rather. Okay. So I'm gonna use my deeper orange and do the effect. Okay. Create the lines. All around okay and now uh, I'm gonna soften the edges okay blend it And on some parts, I'm going to add more. I want it to be darker. Okay, so you can do that. And it's all wet still, so it's going to blossom and just naturally um, spread. Okay, and then I'm going to soften the edges. Okay, I don't want the line to be like suddenly ending there. It's weird. Okay, so now that's done, um, I can add the, um, there's a bit of green, so I'm going to add a bit of green. I still have some here, so I'm going to use that. So that's the nice thing about watercolor. Um, even though it dries up, you can still reuse it again. Just wet the dried watercolor on your palette and it's still usable. So nothing is wasted, though um, some watercolors don't um, re-wet that well, but um, that's not often. Okay? You, can, you can still use it. Maybe it might not be as great as when you first use it, but it's still usable. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to uh, Burnt Umber again to do the, the darker part here. I'm gonna make it like really dark. Okay. So for these little details, um, this number five round brush is really great. And also the rigor brush, perfect. All right. So I made it to dark in some parts. So I'm gonna lift off some paint. Okay. So again can lift off and there okay fix that okay I'm gonna add that one again all right so there you have it um, there's the tangerine um, I'm gonna add some of the lighter orange we mixed earlier to add more stippling dots just to give the texture okay smaller ones now Okay, and not too, not too dense because you know this is the lighter part. So just to be consistent with the texture. Okay, so there you have it. Um, I'm gonna now um, add shadows for this one here and there. So again, you can you, you can use the you can line here and there. Add more shadow. OK, 
Okay, and now I'm going to go and do the leaves. Okay, so now it's um, it's a nice bright green. So I'm going to use the same mixture I did earlier, which is the, these two um, greens, mixing them. Okay, and again I'm going to test if it's dark enough. Okay, I like it. So now I'm going to do the leaves. Um, one flat wash. Okay, so this is just the first layer. I think I'm going to use another one later. Okay, wait for it to dry. Alright, so that's the leaf. So I'm going to wait for this to dry. Meanwhile, we can already move to our next. Okay, so I think this will be our last because it's already been so long I don't know are you still awake <laughs> okay so um, let's go to let's see which one would be great mangoes okay I love mangoes mangoes here in the Philippines are just um, very sweet naturally good kind of sweet and um, they're not pale yellow when you open them I mean when they're perfectly ripe they're like uh, almost um, yellow orange or exactly yellow orange okay so um, mangoes here are like this yellow and we have several actually but this is the most um, popular because this is the kind where it's really sweet and delicious when it's perfectly ripe okay and it also has the right season I mean we have it the full year round but the best time for this is during the summer all right so now let's go and do the mangoes here. All right, on top. Okay, this is our last one. We'll have a round two for our next live, which is perfect because we'll be doing the papaya and the pineapple for next time. So this uh, fruit watercolor painting that we're doing. So it's, um, I can't find my pencil. Okay, where are you? Okay, so this is, okay, there you are. So this fruit watercolor painting um, will be, I think, best if it's in two sessions. So for the next time, it's the more more detailed papaya and pineapple. All right, so let's do the um, mangoes. Okay, so there are three. So try to plot it out on your paper. Okay, first I like to quick sketch the shapes just to see if, you know, if it fits, maybe they're too high, too low, too too much to the right, to the left. You know, when there are times when you do that, you just start sketching and you didn't like you forgot to place it well on your paper, and you realize, gosh, I've drawn it too too much to the right, and there's too much space on the left. So you can quickly just draw the shapes quickly and see if it's right before you start doing all the detailed sketches. Okay, so it's a nice shape. So the thing with um, fruits are, even though they just look like oh, bananas are yellow, it actually takes several shades of yellow, some green, some brown, to um, paint it perfectly. All right, so just take your time, observe the colors that you see, and each each person, each artist sees their um, banana bananas differently so when you're making your banana watercolor painting 
yours might look different to another's. That's great because, you know, that's how you saw it. That's what makes it special. So now we're doing our mango watercolor painting. Mangoes, since there's more than one. Okay, so now since I've plotted the placement, I can now refine the, the drawing. Okay, so it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? As long as you feel like it looks like mangoes, okay, go. So now I'm going to just check if it's right, the placement of the dark browns. Okay, there you have it. So pretty easy, pretty much quicker than these two, <laughs> less details. All right, so now um, we can color. Okay, I'm going to bring my palette closer again here. Okay, so just be careful uh, because you don't want to, your palette to spill your paper and ruin everything. Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, mixing um, this yellow and this yellow. Okay, so I'm going to this is too yellow for the first layer, but this is too bright. So I'm going to mix them both for the first layer to tone this one down, to tone them both down. All right, so now I'm going to mix here so I have less things to worry about. Right. So, okay, this is what I'm saying earlier. Like, is your surprise that your <laughs> color is turning a different shade? So make sure to clean your brushes and use uh, clean water if it's starting to contaminate your mixtures. Okay, so brighter yellow and a warmer yellow. And there you have it. A nice warm yellow. Okay, I'm going to test it out again. Okay, I love it. Okay, it's great. So this will be my first layer. So. Um, since the mango's skin is not shiny like this banana, it didn't really have much um, highlights. Okay, there's no like shiny parts that are that should be left like white or light. Just uh, shading that we will do later on to show that you know some parts are shadowed, some parts are lighter, and of course. Um, how the mango um, ripened. Okay, so I hope um, you found this fruit watercolor painting tutorial helpful. I hope you learned some techniques, some tips. The most important thing is really to have fun while you're doing it. You know, it's the most important because of course you want to keep doing it and you will only keep doing it if if you, you're having fun and you like it okay so don't get discouraged if you don't get what you're expecting okay remember it's always a work in progress you can you know do it again in the future and make it better okay so now um, I'm, I have that lighter yellow okay I like to do this layering because it gives um, your work, your painting, um, more depth, okay, more um, values that you can achieve, more texture, and uh, really that's what makes watercolor great because the brush strokes, the layering, the textures that you can create are just wonderful. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the this brighter yellow without any mix. Okay, and I'm gonna start shading. Beautiful yellow. So this is the yellow deep from our Allegro set. It's a nice warm yellow.
I'm fond of, of this shade of yellow. It's uh, near, it's, it, it, when I do acrylics, it's uh, like cadmium yellow, I guess. It's a little bit like that. But of course, um, the kind of yellow that you need to use will depend on what you're painting. Like earlier, remember with the bananas, we used, um, with our banana watercolor painting, um, we used the lemon yellow as the first layer because the bananas are like more brighter yellow. This one is a warmer yellow, so we're using more of the warm yellows. Here it's a mix of the cool yellows and the warm. Okay, so as you can see, I'm leaving this part out um, lighter. I'm not really covering it with uh, much of this brighter yellow. Okay, because I want to keep the, the part lighter. From the reference photo, it is lighter. Okay, and now the one behind is the most yellow because it's at the back, so it's also more shadowed. So I'm gonna add a lot of this bright yellow there. Okay, especially near where the it touches these two in front. Okay, so shadows are um, one big mistake that people do is they like to make shadows like from black or dark brown. So um, don't do that because it's really going to muddy your work. Instead, um, what is like the darkest color that's near yellow? Like earlier I used burnt shenna. Okay, so it's more natural. It's not like suddenly there's like a black space or brown color, just odd. Okay, so next um, I'm going to use a little bit of this. Um, gamboge with the yellow deep okay so I'm gonna mix it here so yellow deep with some gamboge okay S to give it that more yellow orange color so it means this mango just really ripened really perfectly because it's that nice almost going towards pale yellow orange okay so I'm also keeping my rougher brush strokes because you know it gives the shape it's uh, the fruit its personality okay so today um, we're covering the banana watercolor painting the tangerine watercolor painting and the mango watercolor painting so I hope you're not too disappointed that we won't finish all but I'd rather show you step by step clearly than go through everything fast okay so as you can see I'm doing the removing pigment adding water blending it out Okay, so watercolor is really about your water control. Okay, how much water you use will be affecting your whole work. Okay, so the more that you practice with it and um, explore it, then the more you will um, become more familiar with how much water is good or not, what effects you can do. Okay, and now let's go to this one. Okay, I'm gonna put more shadow here. Okay, and then blend it out. So if you don't like texture, okay, just blend it. Okay, in my case, I love it. <laughs> it's perfect for um, when you're painting organic subject matter, like flowers, and fruits, okay, the brush strokes give it 
go live. Get live to it. But you know, to each her own. If you prefer a more blending style of painting, then do that, of course. It's your personal choice. Okay, and now I'm going to do the one behind. Okay, like I said, there's more shadow here where they meet. So I'm probably going to add burnt shen again there later for the you know deeper shadow. But right now we're focusing on the, the color of the fruit. Okay, so let us know um, if you have any questions, if you have any um, requests, like what you'd like to see from us in the future. Um, what future live videos would you like us to cover? Things like that. Okay, so we're just here to answer your questions. We're all, I'm also curious to find out, you know, what interests you. Okay, so I'm gonna glaze this with the brighter yellow. Okay, this is the more shadowed mango at the back. So your works will really um, improve later on when you, when you add your surface, just, you know, a light color. Just to show that, you know, it's on a surface and there's some shadow, cast shadow under. Okay, so let's see, do I like it? Looks okay. Like I said, if you want to uh, keep your layers separate, um, wait for each layer to dry. And in my case, I, I can use, I use like to use the blow dryer. <laughs> you can try it out too if you want, but of course, if, if you want to keep your wet brush stroke effects it's gonna affect that you know it might move the water so be careful also but if you're just um, drying the washes then um, you can totally the flat washes you can totally use it okay so i like it very textured nice and now i'm gonna add the um the burnt chenna with this bright yellow with this um, gamboge so that um, to create the shadows. Okay. Normally I would wait for this to dry so that um, the layer underneath won't slide, you know, when it's moving. Okay, now I'm going to blend it out. In this case, I'm not adding much water yet. I'm just removing pigment from the brush by wiping it here. And now I'm going to add a bit of water. Make it lighter. Okay, and then I'm going to add here too. Okay, where these two meet. And then um, blend it out as well. Okay, now I'll add a bit of water. Okay, so experiment um, how it looks like, how you blend it out with just removing the pigment little by little and also eventually um, adding water to your brush. Right. So now, um, like I, what I did earlier, I'm going to do the disappearing lines just to like, sketch out. Okay. I, I actually love doing this with um, when I'm drawing people. 
so I don't want to keep drawing hard lines so instead I just suggest lines here and there and the eye takes the viewers eye takes care of the rest so you're just suggesting but um, their eyes they it translates to like a continuous line or that okay so now it's time to make the darkest part which is these really dark browns okay one more here and you can always thin it out if you feel like oops I made it too dark I don't like it okay still wet you can still thin it out don't um, panic yet all right so now again um, the dark brown let's try um, this brown ochre okay because this is a really deep brown here okay I'm gonna change brushes so I have more control okay so I'm gonna do use the number five again okay, and I'm just gonna get directly from the pan no need to thin it out because it's really dark and then do the brown part okay and the last one okay so I'm gonna use um, burnt umber a little bit just on the sides just to give it um, an extra um, shading Okay, like that. So, yay, we're done with our um, fruit watercolor painting tutorial. So those are the, I know I said we're supposed to do five, but I think um, this is more than enough already for you to start with. So um, today we did the banana watercolor painting, the tangerine watercolor painting, and the mango watercolor painting. So. Um, this is a uh, this is fruit watercolor painting but featuring um, tropical fruits okay um, so we'll do this today um, for the next live we'll do the papaya and the pineapple and then eventually we'll graduate to um, a still life painting of um, fruit watercolor okay so I hope you learned something for me today I hope you had fun um, I'll go back to showing my face. Okay. All right. So I hope you had fun and um, let me know if you have any questions and if you have um, any suggestions for our future content. And um, please uh, keep watching our lives and I'll see you in the next one. Okay. So. Thank you for joining me in my fruit watercolor painting tutorial and bye!